Making images with DALI 3 via Bing Image Creator is indeed fun. As you can see, it's great at interpreting your prompts, but you're stuck with a square image of perhaps somewhat questionable quality. I've already released the Stable Diffusion 1.5 Power Up workflows. Here you can see one in action. We've got the original DALI 3 image there and the powered up one from Stable Diffusion. As you can see, it's quite a few more details in there, even though it's gone a little bit uncanny valley and back to the original. Here's an example of one of those power up workflows available from the A Very Comfy Nerd webpage on GitHub. You just drop your DALI 3 image in down there apply some shape and lighting there. I'm using exactly the same shape and there I'm using a gradient going light down to dark. IP adapter means the prompts can be kept very, very simple indeed. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Press Q prompt, wait 20 minutes and eventually you get that reimagining. You've got the three different versions there and the final upscaled one, which is in 4K. Needs a bit of playing with the colors, but overall not too shabby. You can batch up images as well for that instant Laura type effect. But what about using SDXL? Because this is all Stable Diffusion 1.5 at the moment. Well, for one, SDXL doesn't have a tile control net yet which could be problematic as I'm using that for upscaling. Another thing is that the SDXL IP Adapter Plus model here, we've got the SDXL ones, this new one from about 10 days ago, um, actually still uses the old Stable Diffusion 1.5 Clip Vision model. So the, the one from up here, so it's using that one, which is great for compatibility issues when you're mixing 1.5 and SDXL. Okay, time for the thinking cap. I figured given the IP adapter is somewhat similar to Stability AI's revisions workflows, why not go back and take a look at these again? As you can see here, and may remember from my Control Laura video revisions is pretty good with styles and subjects, but generated things that only are kind of sort of vaguely in the same ballpark as your input image. Interesting, but I figured, all right, let's just start from the ground up with SDXL and battle through whatever problems I get. Thus, the SDXL Instant LoRa version one workflow was born. Here, I'm using the iterative upscaler provider there, which seems to be okay even without the tile control net. Excellent. So that's one issue down, many more to go. So sweet, it kind of works as a basic SDXL instant LoRa. Sure, this one only goes up to 2K, but it's, you know, it's all right. That's the original input image there. So he's got a sort of rodent with a, a curious machine and another little rodent on the side. We've got the first upscale, the latent upscale, seems to have turned that rodent into the rest of the machine and then finally up into 2K there. So it's okay, it does its job. All right, some more testing because I like to do tests with things and let's give it a go with some faces. Now, as you can see, that one has upscaled nicely. Let's throw another one in there and generate this. There you go. Pretty similar. Obviously, as you can probably tell, this image is one that was created using StyleGAN. So it's got all these little telltale signs on it, which in the upscale have sort of changed into jewelry or something strange like that. So that's fine. But there you go. It's it's upscaled it. It's done it. That's That's all right. I'm okay with that. Let's double check it again with another face. Here we've got some rather vibrant red hair and blue eyes. So fingers crossed, that's what comes out in the upscale. And it's pretty close. It's all right. It's not too bad. We've got we've got red hair, so that's all right. There's the upscaler there. I'm just doing a really, really quick upscale. You could put that up to two and maybe do four steps, something like that for more detail, perhaps a higher quality image. As you can see, the prompt is also very, very simple. It's just 
a woman, you can change that. But how much can you change that? I mean, we don't really want all these people, do we? We want cool images like, I don't know, something like a rodent. Of course, to do something like that, we're going to have to change this IP adapter image weight down a bit. Let's try it at 0 0.5. Is that enough? Uh, okay. Cool image, bro, but needs a little bit more rodent. All right, let's put this value down even further. Let's go all the way down to 0 0.3 and cue that up. See what comes out with that. Okay, yeah, that seems about right. It's picking up the sort of style and stuff off that original image. We've got some redness at the top there, but it's come out as a rodent. Excellent. That means styles should work as well. So I can add watercolor onto the end there. And do I get a watercolor image? Yes, I do. There he is. Sort of watercolor IP adapter influenced output. Very cool. You've probably noticed I'm also using the SDXL prompt styler here as well. So if I take watercolor out, maybe I just want to pick a style. So let's go for something like flat paper craft and see what happens this time. Great. That seems to have worked perfectly. I have got my paper cut style rodent that has been influenced by the input image. Excellent. Everything seems to be working. But you know what you should do if everything seems to be working? If it's not broken, tweak it. This isn't even its final form, but just for giggles, I added a couple of control nets. Here you can see I've got depth and canny. I'm also over here using that clip vision from the SDXL revisions workflow, because way up here in the IP adapter, I haven't actually even attached that to anything. Sure, it still needs to load this old stable diffusion vision thing, but I'm not using it. I'm using this clip vision G instead. All right, so that's got rid of some of the stable diffusion 1.5 compatibility problems with, you know, when it comes up with errors and it's, oh, this thing doesn't match this thing and there's loads of numbers all over the place. And there you go. There's there's the upscale. So that's almost similar to my original one that I showed at the beginning with Stable Diffusion 1.5, where you take your original DALI 3 image and then upscale it to 2 or 4 or even 16K with that Stable Diffusion workflow. I think that's not too bad. There's the original image over there. Again, the colors on that are quite nice. I do like the colors, but if you zoom in, you can see it's not it's okay. You've got some good detail on the fur, a little bit grainy, but over here it's 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 sort of more vibrant and I don't know, it just seems like a, a nicer output. You've got the other option there, the first upscaler too. So that's sort of achieved in Stable Diffusion XL what I was doing in Stable Diffusion 1.5. Brilliant. As for DALI 3 images with text, well, as you can see here, it is a little bit hit and miss. There's my original input image, this rather cool rodent. It's just seen the news, of course, that aliens exist, as we all know, and trying to upscale things with text in SDXL is a little bit, yeah, so, mm, okay, so I've tried obviously using the canny control net there with various different weights. Some fonts are okay. So if you've got an image with a fairly bold font, you can probably get away with it. You know, play around and maybe you will get lucky. Thus onto its final iteration for now. Obviously each of these different versions are available on the A Very Comfy Nerd GitHub webpage, as mentioned. So you can download any of them and see how they grew over time, maybe help you gain an understanding of what plugs into what and where. But for this one, the first image here is the one that impacts the generation shape. This one is tied into the Midas and Canny control nets. You don't have to use those. You can right click and set 
bypass group nodes, and then it won't use the control net at all. The other images beneath are the ones that sort of go into the IP adapter. So these also help influence the style and content of the final output, along with, as we saw before, the SDXL prompt styler, where you can put in your own prompt and even pick a style as well. I've added absolutely loads of little dials and things down here. So here we go. We can just move that one out a bit. So we've got the IP adapter image weight there. So how much that's going to influence the final output. I like it around 0.3 personally, because that gives you the ability to change all the other things as well. Prompt weighting, I've given you two controls because why not? Personally, I like sticking that on randomized because I don't necessarily want the output image to be exactly like that one there. And what that one does, it sort of randomizes how much your prompt weight is going to be. And uh, yeah, you can get some interesting combinations of things out of that. And there you have it, Instant Laura for SDXL, which you can also use to power up any image you like, such as those from DALI 3 or just photographs. And if you haven't seen any of my other Comfy UI videos, then do check this next one out.